Hello and welcome. This is Dawn. I know third video in as many weeks. Uh, let's hope we can keep up this pace. <laughs> Today's card is a fun and colorful one featuring some Spellbinders products. Now I love this uh, particular collection. This is the Artful Brush collection. There are a few of these in the set. I love this one particularly and I'm going to pair it with the Paint Your World sentiments. So we're going to be doing rainbow. For the Copics, I'm using RV25, YR04, Y08, I think that was Y13, B02, and V17. So I've picked out a piece of paper here wide enough to cut the paint drip from, and I'm going to lay down my color, the first color, which is pink, at one side, the purple, which is the, sec the last color, <laughs> on the other side, then I'm moving to the center, which is the yellow and the green, and then I'll add the blue and the orange between that. So the reason I do this is so that I can space out my colors evenly and make sure that I will have enough room to get all of the colors equally represented. Now sometimes I forget and I just work across in order. By the time I get to the other side, I don't have enough room for that last color, which is uh, purple in this case, which happens to be my least favorite color, so <laughs> sometimes I just leave it off. But this is a great tip for making sure that you have enough room for the colors that you're going to be using. So with that done, we're going to go ahead and die cut that out. For that, we'll be using the Platinum 6 die cut from Spellbinders. No, that is the Platinum 6 die cutting machine from Spellbinders. <laughs> I love Spellbinders dies. I love all the detail that they include with the embossing. And this set is no exception. All right, so now we get to do the brush handle and you can see there uh, that that had all of that wood grain texture uh, built in and it will emboss that into the die cut. But uh, we have white paper here and I want to further enhance that wood look. So I'm gonna take my Distress ink pads here and you could do this with any square or rectangle uh, ink pad. I'm starting with antique linen and linen. Mm, antique linen. And I'm covering most of the paper with this pad. Now I'm lightly skimming the pad across the surface of the paper and allowing one edge of the ink pad to make contact. So I'm slightly tilting the ink pad. And then I'm going to come over that with a little vintage photo. This is just gonna give a little depth and create that wood grain look. And it does a really good job of emulating wood grain with uh, no special tools, just your ink pad. So I'm gonna set this side to dry and then I'm going to cut out the bristles of the brush. Now this is a delicate die. Got a lot of little delicate pieces there, but I find if you put the die at an angle when you send it through the die cutting machine, you get a very clean cut. So I've cut four of those and now I'm going to cut the handle. The ferrule, I've de decided to cut from a metallic cardstock, and that's going to give it that real look of metal. I'm going to glue all of these pieces together with the Be Creative Precision Glue from Honeybee Stamps. So I'll take two of those and layer them on top of each other. I flip one over and glue it to the back of the other, and that keeps the bristles from being in the exact same orientation, creates a little depth. Glue those to the back, and then I'll glue the ferrule to the front. Now, because we glued these double stacked bristles to the back of that brush, my die cut does not have a level back. So what I've done is I've die cut two extra of the handle just from white, and I'm going to glue those on top of each other and then cut the top half off. So just cut that ferrule portion off and then I'll glue that to the back of the brush and that'll give me a level surface so that when I glue it to my card, I can just glue it flat with a little liquid adhesive. Then I'll flip that over and these bristles, you can see they kind of show up under that paint, I splooge for lack of a better word. I like to cut the tips of the bristles down and then glue that on top. And that's just a personal preference. If it doesn't bother you, then don't worry about it. So what I wanna do is make it look like this paintbrush has painted a rainbow across the page here. So I'm laying down the brush approximately where I know or I want or I think, <laughs> I'm laying down the brush approximately where I think I want it to um, live. And I'm using my markers 
to just sketch out where each band of color is going to go. Now this will help me to line up the colors from the paintbrush onto the background and it will look seamless. I'm using the chisel side of our Copic markers. I know we don't use that very often, but it's a great way to lay down a lot of color quickly and a relatively uh, even line. Although you'll see, I am actually not taking care to make my bands very even. I want it to look as if it was painted, so I want it to come across a little streaky. Now you're gonna want to make sure that you uh, add some blending between the colors if you want to fully represent that um, gradual change in color. You could most certainly leave it in solid stripes, but I really like the look here when you just kind of go back and forth between the two colors and it really gives the illusion of those colors uh, blending and mixing like they would if you did like say mm, paint scraping. So once you um, got all of, you've got all of your colors down, I like to kind of add a broken edge where the colors would start, uh, that point where the rainbow meets the paintbrush. And again, this is a personal preference. You could have it all ending in the exact same spot if you wanted. Now, now this wouldn't actually be a rainbow if it was not in the sky. So we're gonna add some clouds to the background. And if you have a stencil, you could certainly use that. If you don't, you could do what I've done here. And I've just cut some uh, puffy clouds from a piece of Eclipse masking tape. And now I'm using a blending brush to blend a little bit of Bo Peep ink. And this is uh, W plus nine ink. Again, any ink would do. I'm blending that into the background. I will uh, put the mask down in a couple different spots and I'm making sure to put it in a couple different orientations. And I'm just lightly blending the hint of uh, the tops of some clouds here. Now this card is so fun and it looks, well it does, it has a lot of different fun techniques, but they're all super easy techniques. And when you combine them all together, all of these little details really make this card something special. Okay, so I've made sure to include different levels of depth in the color of these clouds too, just so it didn't get uh, monotonous or boring. And then we can move on to the next step. Here, you can see how fun that is. Oh. All right, the next step is, oh, uh, glitter. <laughs> don't we all love glitter? No, we don't really love working with glitter, do we? but we're gonna use it in a contained way here. Okay, so we're gonna use just a little bit. I'm putting down some of that same Honey Bee Stamps glue, and I'm gonna pounce this brush through it. Now this is an old, stiff, bristled brush, just a craft brush. You know, those ones that we don't use for anything else. <laughs> so perfect for this though. Pounce that through the glue, and then just streak it across your rainbow. Don't push down so that your glue lines become solid. Just lightly skim it over the surface and it's gonna leave streaks of glue that I'm gonna pour Lawn Fawn Prism glitter onto. I love this glitter. It's so subtle yet so pretty. I'm gonna put that aside and while that dries, I'm going to add some of the chunky glitter from Lawn Fawn to the paintbrush. This time I'm using the nozzle of the Be Creative Precision Glue and just applying little streaks here and there. Now this glitter is powerful. <laughs> it packs a punch, so I like to use it in small doses. Again, we're going to add just a little bit of that chunky glitter to the rainbow as well. And again, I used the tip, the nozzle of that glue to just add a little few little dots and streaks. And here you can see, oh, so pretty. Now I'm gonna cut this out with a four by six rectangle. This is the five by seven layers die from W plus nine. And it has a fun stitched edge detail to it. And we're going to be making this a five by seven card. Now don't worry, don't freak out. I know you're probably thinking we're gonna waste some of that beautiful rainbow. No, we're not. And I'll show you what we're gonna do with that here in a second. 
Okay, so I'm going to use the Live Your Life in Color sentiment here from the uh, Live Your Life, no, Color Your Life. I think it's Color Your Life sentiments. And we're stamping that in W plus 9 Pure Color Black Ink. Now, all of the supplies that I have used in uh, today's cards will be listed in the prod in the description below. So if you're curious about any of the products or if you can't understand my uh, <laughs> fast talking sometimes, <laughs> just check the description box below. So I'm going to pop this up. So I'm adding a little bit of fun foam to the back of our panel. And here is where I'm going to incorporate the rest of that rainbow. So I went ahead and glued up the one panel and then I thought to myself like, ooh, why waste that? I can have the design continue onto the base of the card. So I've cut out the portion of the rainbow that was left over after we die cut. I'm adding some adhesive to that and I'm just gonna glue that right back in place. And it almost looks like part of the card base. It's very hard to discern that it's actually a piece that's glued on top. So I've lightly laid that, I haven't pressed it yet. I'm gonna line up my panel, make sure it's in the right spot so it looks seamless, and then I will press down, and then I will add my uh, panel here right on top. I'm gonna set that off to the side and uh, put my Misty on it so that it dries flat. And now it's time to add some little details. I'm gonna put some butterflies on this. I thought that would be a lot of fun as well. So I'm using an old Martha Stewart uh, punch here to punch some butterflies. If you have one on hand, go ahead and use that. Any butterfly will do. If you have a dye that does small butterflies, use that as well. Now we gotta add a little bit of bling to these too. So I'm gonna use that same method to apply some more of that chunky glitter. Again, I'm just adding a little bit here and there to the edges of the wings. I don't wanna overdo it. Like I said, this glitter, as gorgeous as it is, it can, come, it can become overpowering in large doses. <laughs> here, I'm trimming off that part that hung over, and now it's time to add our paintbrush. And I love, love, love the way this turned out. Oh, it's so much fun. I'll add my butterflies, again, working in threes and a little triangle here. One I added to the brush, the other two I'm adding to the rainbow. And then underneath the wings, I'm just adding a little bit of foam adhesive and that will keep the wings uh, lifted off of the card and keep them from laying too flat. So here is the finished card. I, like I said, I love this card. It's got a lot of techniques in them. But again, super easy techniques, right? But when you put them all together, it, it really does make a card that wows. Here's the other version that I did. This one I used the paint your dreams sentiment and I really love that one too. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's card. I know I had a lot of fun making them. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Remember, all the supplies are listed in the description box below and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.